Days. The Seminoles are back in action tonight against North Carolina State, a team they've outscored 173 to 23 in their last three meetings. You can catch the game tonight at the top of the hour right here on ESPN. Dr. Jerry Punch is in Raleigh with our preview. Jerry? Thanks, Larry. Don't let the paltry 221 yards of total offense generated by Florida State against Duke fool you. The third-ranked Seminoles are loaded with firepower. You can start at tailback with Heisman Trophy candidate Warwick Dunn, who opted to come back for another year in Tallahassee and forego the NFL draft. If Dunn doesn't get you, they can choose one of either 1,000-yard receivers they've got, Andre Cooper or E.G. Green. Last year, defense could have been the Achilles heel for the Seminoles. Not so in 1996. The top-ranked Florida State defense is led by a couple of bruising bookends up front. Junior defensive end Peter Bulware and senior captain Renard Wilson. Coaches say Wilson, number 55, is big as a buffalo and runs like a deer. But don't take my word for it. Ask opposing quarterbacks. He sacked them 23 times during his career as a Seminole, which puts him just too shy of the all-time Florida State record held by Ron Simmons. If there is a glimmer of hope for the Wolfpack of North Carolina State tonight, it's the fact that the only loss that Florida State's ever had in the Atlantic Coast Conference in four years came the very last time they played on Thursday night on ESPN. Larry? Thanks, Doc. Right after Sports Center, Chris Fowler and friends drop in for the weekend kickoff show at 7.30 Eastern. Then Florida State and NC State right here on ESPN. Third-ranked Seminoles visit ACC foe NC State. Another top-10 team. Are they in for a scare on Thursday night? It was a year ago on a Thursday night, Florida State was stunned by Virginia. That game coming up. In the meantime, welcome to the weekend kickoff show. Chris Fowler along with Lee Corso. He hasn't slept all week. Kirk Herm Street, <laughs> he wants to put the pads on one more pack. Mike Patrick and Mike Gottfried with you. You know, over the last few years, so many players have left college early to go to the NFL, go for the money. What a refreshing change it is to have Warwick Dunn come back and play for his senior year. Mike Warwick Dunn told us the other day, he said, I'm 21 years old and I never had any money. One more year is not going to make a difference. And when you look at all the things that have been written and talked about in college athletics that are wrong, Warwick Dunn's what's right. He's a great story. And on the field, you're going to get a chance to look at him here. And if he looks like Barry Sanders, I think he plays like him on the college level. A great back with speed and acceleration. Then he shows you power and vision up in the hole, finding the defensive backs and breaking off. The other dimension that he adds to this Florida State team, along with a lot of great receivers, he can catch the ball in the backfield and run. I think he's the whole package, the best player in college football, Mike. We'll be back to see a lot of him at 7.58 as Florida State goes against NC State here in Raleigh. But right now, let's go back to Chris. Mike's, thank you. Warwick Dunn bottled up by Duke in the opener. Florida State won with defense and special teams. Some changes in the offense tonight. Well, Chris, in that only game they played this year against Duke, Florida State huddled 80% of the time. Watch tonight. They're going to come out. They're in a no-huddle, fast-break offense. The reason? Up-tempo. They want to get going. I think Florida State wins this one big, but in the fourth quarter is when they rally. Fourth quarter? I'm yeah. thinking first quarter. No. <laughs> so on ESPN, has got to be the fourth okay. quarter. Okay. Yeah. I, I think on the other side of the football, watch both defensive ends. First of all, Peter Bowler last year led the ACC in sacks with 10. He shared time with Renard Wilson, a guy that has 23 career sacks, need three. He will break the school record set by Ron Simmons. Guys, this is probably the most athletic defense in the entire country. They can move. And the guy to watch in that defense, besides the pass rushers, is linebacker Daryl Bush, a very strong Butkus candidate. Now, for Bush, one thing remains a constant, keeping his focus, determination, and intensity throughout all aspects of his life. Ivan Maisel has the story. With a jaw cut from granite and a laser stare, Florida State linebacker Darrell Bush is a walking definition of intensity in the classroom and on the field. Darrell Bush, he tends to go full speed every play, and if, if you're in his way and you're not going full speed, you know, you're going to get run over. We go to the sideline, and you come take his helmet off, we won't take it off. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I mean, he's, they stay focused on the football game. Think Florida State linebacker and you think Marvin Jones or Derek Brooks, two players who had more speed than size. There are several things in football that a stopwatch don't get. They're so intrigued with a time that they forget instinct. We can't coach instinct 
that's a big part of my game is not taking false steps, not taking misreads, uh, going directly to the, to the ball with what I, what I uh, see in front of me. He thinks so fast. You know, his reactions to a stimulus are so quick. There comes a point where you just have to turn off all intellectual aspects of the game and you've got to go, you know. But uh, I think that the better prepared you are going into the game and the better uh, able you are to play that chess game once you get out on the field, uh, the better off your game's going to be. For a guy with a 3.85 GPA, the chess game metaphor comes naturally. The fact is, Daryl Bush is three moves ahead in the classroom as well. Now I'm in a situation where I'm, I'm only taking 11 hours to graduate during the season, which is going to help me. He's a disciplined, excellent student, excellent football player. Just If they were all like him, coaches wouldn't have ulcers at all. <laughs> ulcers? No. Bush gives himself an upset stomach every Saturday. He gets so excited before games that he throws up. And uh, I'll look at him over on the field just to see if he's throwing up, and he'll give me a thumbs up. And I know he's going to play a great game. Throws up, thumbs up. As for the Seminole defense without him, give it up. He probably is the most valuable person on that defense. And uh, Darrell Bush, uh, as a middle linebacker, ignites a lot of stuff for us on defense. Ivan, thanks. We trust that Darrell's stomach is settled. He's ready for NC State. They have dominated the Florida State offense in scrimmages. Duke in the opener. The Wolfpack up next. We got more. Stadium and the excitement of Thursday prime time as the king of ACC football comes up to Backo Road. Since joining the ACC, number three Florida State and Bobby Bowden have been almost unbeatable. This year, the Seminoles are chanting the same tune, a high-powered offense with speed to burn. Defensively, a pair of bookends rank among the best ever to wear the garnet and gold. And for the Knowles, a national title is the goal. But NC State hopes to stand in the way, and here comes the Wolfpack. They'll face the Seminoles, the number three team in the country, the ACC favorites, and a team with a legitimate shot at a national title. Back with a kickoff after the State Wolfpack. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Mike Gottfried. It's great to have you with us. Florida State is the only team in the history of the NCAA to have won 10 or more games the last nine years in a row. But as good as they have been in the past, you have a feeling they're better now. Well, I really do, Mike. There's so many weapons on offense. Warwick Dunn, the best running back in the country. They've got a pair of wide receivers. Thad Busby's a very capable quarterback. And on defense, they think this is the best defense they've had in the past 12 years. And, Mike, I think this is the best football team in college football. As always, we have Jerry Punch roaming the sideline for us. Let's check in with a good doctor right now. Thanks, Mike. You know, NC State knows they've got to keep Warwick Dunn and Florida State's fast break offense off the football field. To do that, they've got to keep their offense on the field. That means that chore falls squarely on the shoulders of sophomore quarterback Jose Laureano. Despite the season opening loss to Georgia Tech, Laureano was impressive. He led the Wolfpack to a 10-zip lead, and then suddenly turnovers took their toll. That's been the Achilles heel for the Wolfpack. In the last three times they've played Florida State, they have turned the ball over 17 times. If NC State has any shot tonight, they've got to hang on to the football in more ways than one. Mike? And Jerry, that's what Mike O'Kane is hoping for. He's in his fourth year as the head coach. He won 16 games over his first two seasons, but only three a year ago. Bobby Bowden has had an incredible run at FSU. He now trails only Joe Paterno for wins among all active college coaches. Florida State won the toss. They have deferred their choice to the second half, and North Carolina State will get the football first. Mike, North Carolina State to win this game, they gotta be Don Larson tonight. They gotta throw the perfect game. Scott Bentley has it teed it up, teed up at the 35. There is speed burner Aldous Witted. He has returned three so far this year, averaging only 9.7. And number 81, Torrey Holt, goes back to join him in a two deep at the three-yard line. 
Bentley, probably the most publicized place kicker ever coming out of high school simply because he joined the Florida State program with all their kicking woes. But he has certainly made people forget about all the kicking mistakes that Florida State suffered through. 45,000 or so on hand here at Carter Finley, and we are set to go. Florida State in its history has lost one ACC game. That was last year. Witted will take it seven yards deep and down it there. For North Carolina State's offense, Tremaine Stevens keys the running game. 849 yards last year, over 100 against FSU. Jimmy Grissett, the club's top receiver, caught five passes in the opener against Georgia Tech. On the offensive line, senior Tom Dombalas is the only returning starter. His ability to protect the blind side will be crucial tonight. Two backs, two wide receivers, first and ten from the 20. Laureano the throw on first down. Has time, he completes it to his tight end, Matt Thomas. And the junior up near the 30. Let's take it, the Everstart starting lineup on defense for FSU. Reynard Wilson, the senior end, has racked up 23 sacks, just too short of the school record. Middle linebacker Daryl Bush played on a bad knee last season. Healthy now, he is a Butkus Award candidate. Senior Byron Capers has become a leader in the secondary. Most teams just avoid throwing to his side of the field. Holt and Witted, now the wide receivers on first down. Stevens, the deep man in the eye. And Stevens will get the carry. Stevens for eight yards up the middle. The perfect start for NC State. And Mike, they have confidence, North Carolina State. When we watched them practice the other day, they, they have a lot of confidence in their game plan. And talking to Tremaine Stevens the other day in our meeting, he said, we really feel like we have a great game plan. He's had two games of over 100 yards versus Florida State the last two years. And number nine all time on the NC State rushing list. Second and two after a gain of eight. This time the fullback hit before he even took one stride. Rod Brown never had a chance. And Mike, last week uh, when they played Duke uh, two weeks ago, 10 of the 17 drives, uh, they, they stopped 10 of 17, three and out versus Duke. So, and then they had four that they were that they had them stopped on three and out and then penalties kept the drive going so they have been a dominating defense in the one game that they've had peter bullwer was the man on the bottom of that play third and five witted is the man in motion loriano play action decent protection and rolls deep down the sideline out of bounds Nice coverage by Saunders on Torrey Holt, who had a step on him, but Saunders in the right position. But a nice start in a game plan. Good mix, pass, run, uh, send a message to Florida State's defense. Good confidence first uh, drive by Jose Laureano, the quarterback. And has had decent protection the times he has thrown the football, which will be critical tonight. Jay Dukes will kick it away to the dangerous D Feaster. Number one in the NCAA so far this year after only one game in punt return. Penalty marker down. Peter Bullwear came flying through. May have been a face mask. Yeah, he grabbed the face mask. Uh, they had the punt blocked. They were in great situation, but Peter Bullwear just reached out and got Jay Dukes' face mask. is 15 yards and a first down for North Carolina State. Peter Bowler, number 58, top of the screen. He just reaches out to kind of a dumb move to reach out as the punter was moving because they had him flushed out. Can't get it off, but just reaching his hand down, just caught the face mask of Jay Dukes. Keeps this drive alive for North Carolina State. The quickness and speed of Florida State. Bowler is the compliment to... Renard Wilson on the other end. He's chasing Wilson for the all-time sack lead. He's a year behind him as a junior. But the penalty against FSU moves the ball in midfield for the Wolfpack. Early breaks is what the underdog has to have. See if they can take advantage. 
play action. Good protection for Loriano. Down the middle and overthrown, intended for Jimmy Grissett. Grissett trying to run the post, but again, good coverage. You have to be impressed so far with NC State's offensive line. Good plan, but what they did there, Mike, was they max protect. They really only had two receivers out in the route. They were trying to go for the home run to Jimmy Grissett, number 83. Make sure they protect against Boware and Renard Wilson so that they can't get pressure on Jose Laureano. Carlos King has joined Rod Brown in the backfield. King is number 39, plays both of those backfield spots. He'll get the toss. Here's a little trick play. He fakes the pass back to Laureano. Now keeps it, shakes the tackle, and picks up six yards to the FSU 44-yard line. Nice play. Sean Hamlet and Daryl Bush came up to make the tackle. Well, it was a great move by Carlos King because if he would have thrown the football, it had been intercepted. Florida State played this play from the start. Quarterback's going to pitch the ball. Now, all of a sudden, he comes out the backside, but he is well covered. There's two men on him, so Carlos King tucks the ball down and gets pretty good yardage. Henry Crockett, number 45, the weak side linebacker with great recognition on that play, went right after Loriano. Stevens comes back in on third and four. Loriano draws Stevens. Lost maybe a yard didn't really have much of a chance and it's Andre Wadsworth guy who plays at 282 pounds and has a 37 inch vertical jump and Mike he came to school here as a walk-on he was 6'1 and 220 out of a Miami high school and can you believe it nobody wanted him out of the high school football league in Miami which is heavily recruited he'll probably be a first round pick in the NFL shows you can miss him Dukes will try again let's see what FSU does with the rush they don't come this time. And Dukes lays it up toward the corner. Smart kick, trying to kick it away from the return and downs it inside the 20-yard line. So Florida State gets the roughing call but can't take advantage of it. It will be FSU's football when we come back. Nine out of 17. Really didn't throw the ball all that much in the first game. Only 92-yard passing. Their fewest in 11 years. Tonight, they're going to open it up a little bit more. Busby out of the gun to throw on first down. Done in the flat. Excellent tackle brought down by Kenny Harris to safety. Dunn is shattering the FSU records, trying to become the first three-time 1,000-yard rusher in Seminole history. Andre Cooper has 21 touchdown catches in his career. His 15 last season was a school record. Seminoles in the hurry-up. We'll get you the rest of the lineup in just a moment. Loss of two on that place. Welcome to the Great American Food and Beverage Market, home of the 28-ounce steak and the freshest seafood in town. Get away for a while, down on Bourbon Street, where the Great American Food Market is now serving jambalaya pizza. Rodney Red, number eight, great shape on Wayne Messam, reaches in with his right hand, deflects the football, forces, or forces the punt by Florida State. Sean Liss, who had a great first game, averaging nearly 49 yards a kick, fifth in the country. He's set to punt, and Greg Addis waits all the way back in his own 32. Low kick and short. And fielded and taken across midfield by Greg Addis. So the Wolfpack starts in great field position. Seven-yard return after a 37-yard punt. Loriano wants to throw on first down. Gets it out there complete. It's another first down as he hit Jimmy Grissom. Excellent play calling so far for the Wolfpack. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Doctor? During the change of possession a moment ago, Ted Kane, the Wolfpack offensive coordinator, told his young quarterback, Jose Laureano, and Florida State is walking their middle linebacker, Daryl Bush, up to the line of scrimmage, giving him a double eagle look. Laureano misread that twice in the previous series. He made him aware of where a 45 would be and said, read that as a double eagle and throw over the middle. Got the job done that time. Here is Stevens trying to get some running room and nothing doing. Once again, it's Andre Wadsworth, number 85, who was waiting for him. And you get the feeling, Mike, anything that goes wide doesn't have a chance. No, because of the speed of the Florida State defense. But what Jerry Punch was talking about, when Florida State does jump in a double eagle, the outside passes there are also the little quick passes. But 
I like the way North Carolina State is protecting Jose Laureano here early in the ball game. It has to build his confidence. Addis and Grissett are the wide receivers. Grissett to the top of your screen. Quick set. Nice catch by Grissett, who was sitting on his can at the 34. Nice concentration not to give up on. Just kept his eye on the football, made that catch. Three-step drop, so it's very tough for Renard Wilson, number 55. They're just chopping him, but the three-step block, the three-step throw, it's just so quick that you can't get the rush on the quarterback. You have to be so careful with that chop block. These guys are so athletic. If you go too low and show it too early, they'll go right over you. And they'll get those hands up and yes, knock sir. down the quick pass. They go with two tight ends on third and seven. Loriano so far, three out of five. Loriano under pressure this time, trying to step up and run, and is nailed back at the 36-yard line. The pressure was being applied by Bullware from the right defensive end. Crockett eventually ran him down and made the tackle. The first time Florida State's pressure has caused any problem. And, Mike, you talked about the speed of this Florida State defense. They've got so much speed. Peter Bullware, number 58, he's putting pressure on Laureano, forced him out of the pocket. Then Henry Crockett, the linebacker, waited and made the tackle. Dukes into punt. Trying to hang it high and short. Got too much of this one, though. Way too much. And the coaches will not be happy with that effort. His job was to kill it inside the 20-yard line and play field position. He did not do it. We are tied. Nothing, nothing. First quarter. This is not my hobby. This is not my little thing. It might have been the glass ceiling. This is not what I do till the kids get home. This is not my life. This is not what I do to make ends meet. Might have been the old boy network. This is not my husband's this life. This is not my father's But life. the real reason why 7.9 million women in this country have opened their own businesses is... This is my business. Because they can. This is my business. Office Depot. We've got all you need. All at the best prices. Guaranteed. Office Depot. This is where I take care of business. Over the past 13 years, no other import manufacturer has sold as many sport utility vehicles as American Isuzu Motors. But hey, why stop at 13? Right now you can lease a 96 Rodeo for some of the lowest prices of the year during the Isuzu Big Deal Clearance Event. The rugged, dependable, go-anywhere Isuzus. Hey, your turn, man. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite. Thursday nights in a row for the underdog to have a chance. Things have to go well early. They have. They have gone early. They haven't turned the ball over. North Carolina State in their previous three years against Florida State had just turned the ball over and just taken themselves out of the ball game. They haven't even started tonight with those turnovers. What a difference from last year already, where it was 77 to 17, and Florida State had 745 yards in total offense. Not that they can't do it again. They're certainly capable. No, they're like a time bomb. Yeah. Ready to go off. They'll shift Warwick Dunn into the eye behind Abdullah, and he'll get the toss. Abdullah, nice block. Dunn with a good run, but George Williams came out from his tackle spot to make the stop. Warwick Dunn. Just tremendous numbers, and keep in mind, he doesn't get that many opportunities to run the football, Mike. No, he said, he said I'm a patient individual. I'm going to make the most of my opportunities once I get the ball in my hand. Look at the averages, 6'8", 7'5". Second and six now after a game of four. Play action by Busby. No pressure whatsoever. Unloads downfield. Cooper can't hold it. John Sedin right with it. Pump fake by Busby. And Cooper, who is a big play guy with all those touchdown passes, but Sham Sedin was right there. But well, why that is so big for number seven, Sham Sedin, is because last year he gave up two jump ball passes to Florida State. And he was looking forward to this ball game and the challenge of going up for that football with Andre Cooper and being able to knock it away. And that what a conference builder for him. He got hurt last year in a couple of long throws. Third and six. Three wide receivers set for the Seminoles. Three-man rush. 
FSU going against an eight-man secondary, and this pass is complete to E.G. Green. I think Busby is too good to give him that look all the time. I really think that Busby is going to develop into one of the better quarterbacks in the country. He has a gun for an arm, and uh, also the thing that he brings with you, he can run the football. He will scramble and be like a Charlie Ward. But look at this throw down the field. Good uh, E.G. Green, good route over the middle, and a good completion by Thad Busby. Green team with Cooper last year, the first 1,000-yard duo in school history. Busby wants to throw it again. Dumps it short to gun. So dangerous in the open field. Got a block from Cooper. He gets down to the 35-yard line. Cooper at 6'2", 194, throwing him a block downfield to pick up additional yardage. Gain him 19. Ward Gunn just reminds me so much of Barry Sanders every time he gets a hold of the football. Working against the linebacker now. The good little move to get outside. Picks up the block by Andre Cooper and gets down the sideline. But so dangerous when the ball's in his hands. First down Seminoles to Wolfpack 34. Busby to throw again. Throws short. Incomplete for about five yards to mess him. Messam wrapped up. Rodney Red makes his second tackle. You were talking about Ward Dunn, about the fact that uh, he didn't go pro, and it was such a healthy uh, uh, sight. And uh, we talked to him yesterday, and he said he talked to several Florida State football players. He talked to Charlie Ward, he said stay. He talked to Dion, he said go. <laughs> so he listened to Charlie Ward. Well, it's a wonderful thing for college football that he did. There's Ward Dunn on the carry, and they are laying for him. Picks up maybe one to the 26-yard line. He had the great line. He said, I, I haven't had any money for 20, 21 years. What's one more? He'll get a ton next year. Oh, uh, believe me, he's going to be one of the top picks when the draft comes out. You talked about him reminding you of Barry Sanders. He reminds me of Barry Sanders, too, in his personality. No hot dog about him. He just goes out there and does his job. The numbers on Warwick done already. Third all-time with 10 games to go in the senior season. Third down play action, Busby has time, can't find anybody, now he's tricked. Still can't find anybody, he'll go down outside the 30-yard line. FSU finally could not protect Busby all day long. You know, he had a two-man route, Clayton Simon, Jeff Blanche, and that's a guessing game that Florida State's going to get into with North Carolina State because you figure they're going to blitz, so they brought a tight end in, kept him in the block. Bobby Bowden wanted big protection against the only two receivers out. North Carolina stopped, dropped back in coverage, and uh, everything was covered. Spot the ball near the 37. It will officially be a 46-yard effort for Bentley, who was perfect so far this year. And got this one. Scott Bentley from 46 yards. And the Seminoles are on the board first. 4.56 to go first quarter. AJ's has it all. Walk through their doors and you'll find our... Carolina, the Wolfpack getting set to receive the football after giving up the four first points of the game. 4.56 to go first quarter. And Busby looked good on the scoring drive to go 51 yards to set up the field goal. Bentley's first kickoff went seven yards deep in the end zone. Witted and Holt back to receive. That's Witted. Track background. He can really fly if he gets a chance. Witted two yards deep, and they'll keep him in there. Or Holt, rather, made the catch two yards deep. College football on ESPN2 Saturday at 12.30. The Stanford Cardinal against the Badgers of Wisconsin. Then at 5.30, Texas Tech visits the Bulldogs of Georgia. And at 8.30 p.m., Donovan McNabb and the Syracuse Orange Men travel to Minnesota. Three-nothing FSU. The Wolfpack takes over at its own 20-yard line. Jose Laureano, highly recruited out of Orlando, Florida. Came to Raleigh to play his college football. When he got here, not the most dedicated student athlete you've ever seen. He really had some uh, problems until they talked to him, and he really turned his life around. Go with a three wide receiver set on first down. Now they'll run the option. Loriano with a keeper. 
had nothing else to do as Stevens, the pitch man, was covered. And Florida State on anything wide really comes after you. Well, we were talking to Jose Laureano the other day about the option. He said, the only thing that worries me is those two defensive ends coming down and hitting me. And there's Renard Wilson, number 55, and Peter Bowler, number 58, needing at the quarterback on the option play. He didn't seem like he was sold on the option the other day when we were talking to him. Well, he didn't run it like it was his favorite play, did he? No, he was looking for 58-55. He found him. Loriano has time, wants a screen to Grissom. Couldn't get away from Henry Crockett. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Doctor? Well, Jose Loriano was the complete athlete, guys. Not only was he an all-state quarterback at Colonial High School in Orlando, he was a four-year starter as a point guard on the basketball team and averaged double figures. He was a pitcher and played center field on the baseball team. And get this, he qualified for the state tournament as a decathlete and was clocked at 10.8 in the 100 meters. Pretty good numbers, Jerry, and they are happy to have him here. All he needs is experience to be an outstanding player. Third and eight is what he faces here. Pressure. Loriano trying to run away from him. He just throws the ball away. Good decision there as he was under tremendous pressure. Peter Bowler again in the face of Jose Loriano, not giving him a chance. Trying to double him, but uh, no one really gets a block on him. Bernard Wilson also in there meeting its quarterback again. Well, Tremaine Stevens threw a block that was about three yards away from Bulwer. Dukes to punt it away. And Feaster will go back across midfield. Showing a rush, and here they come. Well, Dukes takes a while to get it out of there, but gets off a beautiful punt. Guys, Feaster all the way back to the 27. Looking for a block, that'll be a clip. A block in the back against Florida State on the return. 52-yard punt, no return, and it looked like Troy Saunders was the man who had the illegal push in the back. Mike, they nearly got that one. They've been close on a couple, and they'll keep coming after them. Florida State's one of the best teams and special teams in college football. Florida State has yet to start outside its own 20-yard line in three possessions. Let's go to Jerry Punch. After that last uh, offensive drive, Bobby Bowden came over and put his arm around Thad Busby and praised the young quarterback on that drive to get him down in field goal position. However, Bobby's son, Jeff, was hot at his wide receivers on the third and long for not coming back and trying to help Busby when he was flushed out of the pocket. Rock Preston, number 24, gets his turn at tailback behind Abdullah. Busby to throw on first down. Cooper, ball hit the ground incomplete. Cooper tried for the diving catch, but couldn't come up with it. Coverage by the free safety, Damon Whitecheek. Trying to guess again with North Carolina's state's defense and whether they're going to be blitzing. Andre Cooper just on the quick slant. Should have had that catch. Brock Preston gives you another weapon in that backfield for Florida State. This is his first action. He was suspended for disciplinary reasons for the first game. I bet he's itching to get his hands on the football. Sack, no! Busby somehow got away back at the seven-yard line. Now trying to make it more positive. Tip nearly caught, nearly intercepted. Well, that play had a lot of ups and downs in it. He Melvin got, Pearsall had a shot at it. He got away with a big mistake here. Instead of running the football, this North Carolina State defense is bringing the crowd into this ball game. They're under man. North Carolina State, they play with three down linemen. They don't have a lot of size. Tom Laughlin, 96, with the pressure. But that must have been best served to run that football. Almost had it picked off. It was tipped by Dwayne Everett. Or Dewan Everett, excuse me. Third and ten. Seminoles have converted one. Three-man rush. Plenty of time for Busby underneath, but that ball should be down. It was completed to Preston, but he had a knee on the ground when he caught it. No, Mike, I tell you, when you look at this Florida State offense, they only really ran 58 plays versus Duke last week. 
It looked a little rusty. Here's the throw again to Rock Preston. You said he was suspended playing his first game, so they have not been able to get on track in these first two ball games so far. And Busby really didn't do him a favor throwing it behind him. He could have picked up maybe first down yardage if he gets the ball out in front. List to punt to Addis. NC State showing a rush. Now they'll drop back. Pretty kick this time. Addis from the 35. Slips one tackle. No blocking. Got eight yards on his own. Melvin Pearsall down on special teams. A return of nine officially after a punt of 48. Jose Laureano, Mike, his brother played for Florida State. He wanted to go to Florida State. They recruited him. They were only going to take one quarterback. They took Dan Kendra. He was at their camp with Thad Busby, and he said, if they would have recruited me as a quarterback, I would have definitely gone to Florida State, but they wanted me to change over and be a free safety. So he's trying to prove, prove a point tonight to the Florida State coaches. Rashawn Spikes, number 17, into the ball game, and Spikes is crushed by Henry Crockett. What a shot from the 240-pound senior linebacker. Rashawn Spikes is out of Maloney High School in Meridian, Connecticut. Rob Smizek says, Coach, an excellent coach there. He holds the record, Connecticut record holder for touchdown, 77. And the coaches here at NC State think he's going to be a great tailback for them here. Parade All-American. Gained only a yard on that. Spikes comes out of the ball game. Some tremendous hitting going on by that Florida State defense. Second and nine. Loriano to throw, has a little bit of time, throws it in the flat. If he throws that ball on target, Henry Crockett has a touchdown with an interception. Now all of a sudden you see the pass rush getting to Jose Loriano because they're going to a little bit deeper drop, five-step drop, and they can't hold him out here. You see the pressure by Greg Spires, number 90. You all know the tackles for North Carolina State have the biggest and the toughest job tonight holding out those two defensive ends. North Carolina State has yet to convert a third down. Third and nine for Laureano. Three wide receivers. Play action. He's rushed. Steps up. Has room to run. Tries to spin out of a tackle. Got to his own 49-yard line. Good effort by Laureano. If he stays deep in the pocket, he's sacked with all that pressure. And let's see what Mike O'Kane decides to do. He's Still has not football. put on the punt team, and now he's talking to him and Will. Yeah, he has he's no got to do this, yeah, right? He has no choice. The fans want him to go for it, but he's in this ball game right now, three to nothing in the first quarter. 51 seconds to go. Moral victory here. Sure. Holding, uh, they hold them to three points. Take a chance. Go for it, and then you give up a great field position to turn this goal game around in one series. Dukes, no rush this time. Line drive kick toward the corner. Takes a good bounce, but goes into the end zone. So twice, Dukes has tried to pin them deep, and twice he's put the ball in the end zone for the touchback. Talking about Jose Laureano going to the camp at Florida State, Bobby Bob's camp before his senior year. Thad Busby was at the same camp, and that's when they decided that Thad Busby had what it takes to be the quarterback at Florida State, and they offered him a scholarship, and he committed right away, Mike. He was not recruited. He didn't want to go through the recruiting process. He knew he was going there. He knew he was going to sit for a while. And as we talked to Bobby Bowden the other day, he said, I believe it takes three years to learn our system, this learn offense. the coverages, and uh, he feels like right now Thad Busby's going to take off. He agrees with his coach. All he needs is a little more experience. He certainly has the arm. It was sore in preseason, but he says the zip is coming back. Bad news for opponents. The Heisman candidate trying to get outside. Cuts it back. Warwick done what a great move. And now it's a foot race. Warwick done brought down at the 30. Caught from behind by Hassan Shamsuddin. Mike, that's why I think he's the best player in college football. There was no place for Warwick Dunn to go on that play. North Carolina State had it stopped. They're going to follow Warwick Dunn, number 28, into the hole. There's a missed tackle right here. Now they've got him hemmed in. All of a sudden, he works his way out. Tim Thomas with a good block. The right tackle, or left tackle, number 70. The strength of Warwick Dunn getting to the outside and then cutting him down. 51 yards. Here's Busby on a little half roll. Now he's under pressure. Escapes again. His ability to move in the pocket is huge. Throws downfield. End zone. Touchdown. Caught by E.G. 
Green, 29 yards. That looks like one of those plays you run in the backyard. But that Busby has the ability to get away from the rush. But what made the play was E.G. Green coming back to the side that Thad Busby was rolling to. You have blitz rules for your wide receivers that when a quarterback starts rolling one way, receivers move in that same direction. There was a flag dropped in the end zone you might have seen. It was picked up by the official. He threw it right where E.G. Green was diving out of bounds. Might be a celebration. Uh... Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike. After the touchdown. Touchdown good. Penalty. Oh, no. Mike, that might have been the celebration call. And I'll tell you what. It's been relaxed this year. I've seen a lot sure of calls that could have been made. Stressing it last year. They've kind of let it go this year. So They'll assess the penalty on the kickoff. Bentley will go for the point after as the clock ran out on the quarter. And Florida State on two big plays has taken a 10-0 lead over the Wolfpack of North Carolina State here in Raleigh. We'll be back on Thursday Night Football in a moment. Do I like to shop? Oh, yes. State's offense is going to get that football again. And the last thing you want against Florida State is the defense has been out there a long time. And they try to keep the pace of the game with the no huddle. They want to put the pressure on the defense all the time. Dukes to punt to Feaster. That's the NCAA leader right there. 33 and a half yards of return. One of those 59 yards for a touchdown. Bobbled by Dukes. He got it back. He gets it out of there end over end. Takes a wolf pack bounce. And will die down at the 25-yard line. Sunday at 12.40 Eastern, the 27th race of the NASCAR Winston Cup season. Ains 500 from the Martinsville Speedway. Last year's winner, Dale Earnhardt, now fourth in the point standings behind leader and reigning Winston Cup champion, Jeff. A flag on the deuce at 3 o'clock. Then, of course, our live flag. The flag comes at 12.40. Gordon won his eighth of the year last Sunday at Dover. Mike, what a year in NASCAR. All right, Doctor, thank you. First and ten. Seminoles toss it to Preston. And Rock Preston out to the 37-yard line. Well, I say they're so deep at running back that they just keep throwing great running backs at you. Dee Feaster, who's the third-team tailback, number 33, probably would start on most Division I football teams, and he's the third guy. He has to wait till work done and Rock Preston get their carries before he can get on the field. Dunn getting a breather. The rushing yard so far, mounting up to the Seminole. Preston again, student body left. Couldn't break a tackle, got out to the 45. Nice stop by Tim Ramser, the backup middle linebacker. And now it looks like Bobby Bowden figuring that he's got a real good size advantage inside and a defensive line that's undersized. Now it's going to start taking the ball at him and running the football a little bit to open up his passing game a little bit more. Warwick and Dugans are in as the wide receivers. They're back in the I formation. Busby steps up and throws complete to the Wolfpack 35 yard line. Melvin Pearsall, the tight end. He was one of the guys who was upset that they didn't play very well against Duke and said he welcomed the extra practice time. Well, you know, you only have one football, and then Melvin Pearsall is going to make a crossing route here with a good faith that's going to hold the linebackers, but they get so many weapons, it's hard to get the ball to everybody. Here, Thad Busby just lifts the ball over the linebacker to Melvin Pearsall for the completion. Gain of 21, another first down for the Seminole. Last year against NC State, they had 38 first down. Busby over the middle. Pearsall again inside the 20 to make the 17 yard line. Because they had success running a couple plays, now Thad Busby's fake is holding the linebackers because they're not sure whether they're going to run the football. He's going to get good fake in here, which will hold the linebackers. And now Melvin Pearsall gets to see the linebackers. They're held. Now Melvin Pearsall right behind him for the completion. 
Another first down Florida State. They are marching again with 12.29 to go in the half, already up 10 0. Preston. Excuse me, Dunn back in there. Got to about the 12 yard line. He talked about the tailbacks they have. How about the fullbacks, Mike? You've got Abdullah, who's 225 pounds. He's the little fullback. Lamar Glenn, 248. Then, of course, you got Pooh Bear Williams, who's 285 as a fullback. Pooh Bear's not going to play tonight. Uh, he's serving a one-game suspension. But uh, you're right, Mike. And to be a fullback in this offense, you might get the football every now and then. But you got to block Warwick Dunn behind Abdullah gives him a good block, but a fine play on defense by Kevin Russell, who was knocked to the ground, came up, and made the stop. Line to the left. Warwick Dunn's going to keep his head on the swivel. Good backs. The eyes of a good back watching the hole where it develops and then who to cut off of. He knew he didn't have a lot of blocking out there. He's going to have to take Kevin Russell on at the point of attack. Tight formation. Fullback, Abdullah, pounds his way down to the five. That's easily a first down. There's a marker down on the play, though. They had to keep those fullbacks happy, Mike. Give yes, them the sir. ball on the third short. And it's against the Wolfpack. An offside call. Now, here's where you have trouble. They've got the running game going. They also have the tall receivers. They've got... 6'2", Andre Cooper on the outside against small corners, so they've got the fade possibilities, but the way they're running the football, they're moving the ball on the ground successfully now. And you can tell the emotion starting to wear off for North Carolina State after that initial surge of adrenaline. Offside, defense, penalty accepted, half the distance to the goal, first down. The problem, Mike, has been the North Carolina State offense. Yeah, now they're in the throwing mode, and they gotten away a little bit from the running game because Florida State's defense has made them get away from it, but they've got to go back with Tremaine Stevens and try to establish some type of running game to get that clock moving and try to get some mix in their offense. Two fullbacks and two tight ends on first and goal. Seminoles, perfect. 100% scoring inside the red zone. Done on the toss, short side. Three-yard line and no more. Outside linebacker Dewan Everett made the stop. That's an interesting call there because Florida State is going with an unbalanced line. There's only two linemen on this side, so really you figure they're going to go to the field side to come back into the short side. And good play and work done with the with the run, but good defense, Dewan Everett, number 16. So maybe they'll run that same formation, Mike, and then go with the formation. Now they're going to bring in their wide receivers. Try to open it up a little bit more. And spread out. North Carolina State gives it a run in the favor. Second goal. Done. Just pushed back as he got about a foot from the goal line. First man there, Damon Whitechee, the safety. Ramser was also there, saving the score at least momentarily. Ward Dunn trying to eye up where he's to run this football. A good pursuit. Damon Whitey, as you said, good pursuit. There's a flag down on the play as they run it. Quick count, trivia play. North Carolina State, smart, got a timeout before the play was run. They had something set up for them. Timeout before the snap. Third and goal, 10-0, FSU. No play. Silver bullet, it shipped cold to tap the cool taste of the Rockies. I float through life 
when you can drive. Introducing the Michelin X1 with a six-year unlimited mileage tread life warranty. It gives you better wet traction than any rain tire, plus control in any driving condition. After all, it hasn't rained that much in years. Seminoles, they're on the verge of making it worse as they have third and goal inside the one with 10.49 to go first half from Raleigh, North Carolina. Warwick Dunn has already had the big first quarter over the 70-yard mark. And he is the tailback in the tight formation on third and goal. It's the fullback. He may not have gotten in there. No signal from the official. It will be fourth down. As powerful as Florida State is, I think they go for this. Abdullah got the call, but big George Williams, 293 pounds, was waiting for him. George Williams got penetration. You see how high the offensive line was on that play. George Williams was able to get underneath him and get penetration. Mike O'Kane hoping that his club can hold here and get the football back. Fourth and goal. Done. Abdullah got him a block. Touchdown, Seminole. Almost impossible to stop with a tight formation to get him outside. Very difficult again, but you were right on Khalid Abdullah, number 32. He was the lead blocker. Again, to the short side of the formation. There's only two linemen over there. Everybody thinks they're going to go to the formation. Warwick Dunn just found the block of his outstanding fullback, Khalid Abdullah, to get in the end zone. And even if you don't score down there, you leave the offense on a half-yard line. So it was the only decision for Bobby Bobby. An offense you have dominated so far. Bentley, who is perfect for the point after, knocks it through. He's now 7 for 7. Warwick Dunn, 72 yards on 9 carries. He is averaging 8 a shot. And the Seminoles up by 17. Five, took 10 plays, 75 yards, nearly four minutes off the clock. It's about twice as long as Florida State normally takes to score. Their last drive, they did it in two plays. Bentley to kick. Witted and Holt are deep. Low line drive that stays inbound. Picked up by Holt. Looking for a block, it's not there. He's brought down to 17 in our block. Dimitro Stevens chasing the play on special teams, got the tackle. One of the better defensive linemen we talked about earlier is Andre Wadsworth. He gets a push up the middle so much. He's so strong at 270, but as we said, he came as a walk on at 220. Tough job. He'll give it to his fullback, Rod Brown. Brown stopped by Bullware. Let's go to Jerry Punch, Doctor. You're commenting on the absence of an NC State running game, and Tremaine Stevens, their big horse in the backfield. Stevens injured his ankle early in fall camp and seemed to be doing well, but re-injured it early in the second half against Georgia Tech. Tonight during warm-ups, he was hobbling, trying to run the option. They haven't used him much. He's still not 100%, maybe 75 at best with that ankle. And Jerry's had such great success. Two straight games against the Seminoles over 100 yards. Play action here. Loriano in trouble and just throws it away. Flag is down. Let's see if it's grounding or maybe a face mask. I think it's going to be grounding because Loriano's out there saying, look, I had somebody in the area, but he was just trying to unload that baby. Mike, I'm not sure that call, because I thought his arm, really, he didn't have a, the ability to even throw the ball. Let's take a look at it. But, uh, 
Here's the pressure coming from the outside. Both Boulware and Renard Wilson coming from the outside against those tackles and a running back. Let's see why the call here. I think it's pretty good. You thought it was a good call? Yeah, because there was nobody, nobody wearing a red shirt. That was, it's uh, easy to say when you're, when, you're, when you're on Jose Loreano. Yeah. Oh, I'd have done the same yeah. thing, trust me. Now he faces a third and 23. And they'll just try to get some breathing room. There is none there for Stevens. Now a little pushing and shoving going on after the play. And we know that early in this game, Florida State has had a chance at the punt to block two punts. Jay Dukes had to run on the first one, so will this be one where they'll go after or will they set the return up? Florida State's excellent at blocking kicks. Dukes with less room than normal. Has to be careful not to step on the end line. This is the sixth punt of the half for NC State. Here they come. They stuffed it. Touchdown Seminoles! Mike, you called it. Well, you look, you watch the first two punts. They had the first one, and they almost had the second one. And I know the coaches up here in the press box are seeing the same things, that the protection of North Carolina State is breaking down. Troy Sanders, number four, made the block. And Byron Capers gets the recovery. Number four are going to come from the outside. Watch him take the ball off the kick. Great form. See, a lot of guys don't know how to block kicks, but he took the ball right off the punter's foot. Bentley for the point after. And the Seminoles starting to ring it up on NC State. It's 24-0 for the third-ranked team in the country. Troy Saunders, who blocked the punt and set up the touchdown to put the Seminoles on top 24 0 with. 8.23 to go in the half. Mike Patrick, Mike Godfrey, Jerry Punch. Glad you could join us from Raleigh, but the Seminoles have put a damper on the 45,000 home fans and Mike O'Kane tonight. Well, the problem you have if you're Mike O'Kane is you can't move the football. And you can't just now all of a sudden run the football because you're 20 some 24 points behind, but you still have to have mix in your offense. You can't allow Florida State to tee off on your offense. Seminoles have scored three touchdowns in the last 637 to break open, open a 3 nothing game. They're like a powder cake with just so much skill. And it's already ignited. But down this one does hold five yards deep in the end zone. The Wolfpack will start from its own 20-yard line. And Mike, there's an added weapon that uh, sometimes is overlooked. Scott Bentley has been able to kick that ball in the end zone, which means the other offense is going to start from the 20. So he has done his job, hit the first field goal to get uh, Florida State off the mark, and then his kickoffs have just really pinned North Carolina State's offense in. Mike, when you talk about the components of a championship team, they seem to have it all because they've got the kicking game special team We've already seen it. They've got it all. King and Spikes are in as the in at the running back as the Wolfpack trying to get something started on the ground. Spikes gets a carry. North Carolina State's inability, excuse me, Mike, only 30 yards here in the first half. They've run 20 plays. And they started off with good mix, and then uh, all of a sudden, uh, They've been forced to throw the football, but they've got to keep the mix that they had that first series. Spikes and Brown are the back. This is Spikes, the young man they have so much hope for. He's about 27 to bring up about a third and three. They say Tom Lemming picked him, uh, who's a recruiting uh, person out of Chicago, picked him for his All-American high school team last year. An outstanding back that Michael Keane says has just has tremendous ability now. This Tremaine Stevens hurt a little bit uh, with the gimpy ankle. They're going to keep him out and uh, go with the freshman. 
NC State has not converted a third down opportunity here in the first half. They are 0 for 7. Shift out of the eye this time for Laureano. Little half roll, man in his face, throws incomplete. Even when you cut block these defensive ends, they are so quick, they come right back up and in your face. Bernard Wilson, number 55, was a linebacker coming out of high school, so he's got good movement. He gets in the face of Jose Lariano. Wilson needs only two sacks to break the all-time school record. And he's licking his chops right now because he figures he's going to get it tonight. A 24-point lead in North Carolina State throwing the football. Second, he needs two to tie and three to break. From the 40 and back about five yards comes D. Feaster and Omar Dixon was down to make a tackle. ESPN has the best in college football Saturday at 12.30 Eastern. Number 7 Ohio State hosts Pittsburgh. Then at 7.30, the SEC, number 21 LSU, taking on the 13th ranked Auburn Tigers. Start your day at 11.30 a.m. Eastern with College Game Day. Flag down on the punt. The initial signal was against the Wolfpack, but the referee just pointed to uh, Florida State, but they are still talking to someone also. I think he just pointed the wrong one. I think he may have gotten both teams here. You always have your captains look over to the coaches but the coaches really don't know what the penalty is sometimes they try to get a relay system so you can tell me is it 15 five what is it holding prior to the kick kick penalty decline there'll be a post scrimmage during the run 10 yard penalty from in the run I made a need, need an interpreter for that one. I still haven't figured it out. Here's the yardage story, 206 to 42. The first penalty was a, a holding call before the punt. And the second penalty, a holding call against Florida State on the return, and that's the one that they'll mark off. And Florida State feels they have pretty good field position, right. so they turned theirs down. They knew they were going to go back 10 yards, but they'd like to start here at the 36-yard line. Preston is in there, a tailback for Bobby Bowden. Now it may be time to go up on top with Cooper and E.G. Green. But go under center this time and shift back in the eye. Now Busby wants to change the block. Draw play to Preston. Preston dragged down as he got to the 38-yard line. Kevin Turks, number 12, the sophomore strong side linebacker, got it. North Carolina State's coaches visited the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bill Cowher's a graduate of uh, North Carolina State, put a lot of their defensive uh, ideas in Nebraska, and they also looked at Virginia Tech, some of the things they're doing, trying to incorporate it in a, a gambling, blitzing style defense. Second and eight. Busby with a short set, throws quickly, got it out there complete to Wayne Messer. The senior who is not only a tremendous athlete, but the student body vice president who has his own page on the internet. You're a surfer, aren't you? No, I, I don't, I stay out of the water. Uh, but but I, all these, Wayne Messam's a great story. The vice president, uh, Ward Dunn's a great story. There are so many good things happening in college football that people don't even hear about. Some really good kids in the Seminole program under Bobby Bowden, always have been. Third and two. Busby out of the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. He completes the press. First down, midfield, 40, 37 yard line. Rock well, Preston, the junior out of Miami, gains 19. Excuse me, Mike, when you spread people out and all of a sudden you got a linebacker right here trying to defend against a running back you spread formation. You got Morocco Brown, number 48. And he's not going to make that play against Rock Preston. And that's what binds the uh, North, North Carolina State team defensively tonight against all the speed that Florida State has. 5.49 to go in the half. Busby with a four wide receiver set. Goes to Dunn. Warwick Dunn down to the 22. Such a well-designed 
It is such a complicated offense, it makes defensing it that much more complicated. You're always looking for matchups, and the matchup right now that Bobby Bowden is stuck on is the running back versus the linebacker. Busby has hit his last seven passes. Seminoles overcome a sluggish start. Here's the blitz. Busby gets away. Throws. Messing with the catch. Gets down to the five-yard line. Finally tackled by Kip Carpenter. The Tad Busby showing his mobility to get out of the pocket and make the throw. Here's another story about Busby. We talk about Warwick Dunn passing on money to come back for his senior year. Busby turned down a $300,000 baseball bonus to play college football. Favorite quarterback is Joe Montana. Not a bad pick. Busby with a short set, throws incomplete. He threw that one behind E.G. Green. Really just turning around when the ball got there. He didn't really start well against Duke last in their last ball game, but his arm was really tired from throwing in two a days. Coaches really, up until two days before Duke, had him stop throwing because his arm was dead. He said the other day when he talked to us, he says, I can really feel now that I got more zip on the ball because I've rested my arm a little bit. Bobby Bowden was not happy with his offense in the first game. He said we tried to do so many things we couldn't execute any of them. Tonight, much better. 12 out of 17 for Busby, 173 yards. Second down from the six. Busby lost the snap, and now flags go down. He got offense in college football. Two tight ends, two wide receivers, Busby. Once again, scrambling. Really moves around in the pocket well. Throws, picked up. Intercepted by Morocco Brown. And yes, he is named for the country. Well, you can scramble around, but sometimes you can make some mistakes throwing the ball. He'd have been better suited again to run the football and pick up what he could. You just didn't see Morocco Brown. Had success in that first touchdown, but Andre Cooper was open. He saw him open, but didn't see Morocco Brown in the 48. Andre Cooper, number one, is working up the field. He's on an in route. Now, he's going to see his quarterback in trouble. Here's my rule. Get to the side where he's, where he's rolling to. He gets his hands up, and Morocco Brown steps in for the interception. Oh, it's a great play by him because Shamsa Dean, who had the receiver man, the man fell down. And if Brown doesn't cover up, it's an easy touchdown. So a nice defensive stand by the Wolfpack, and they'll take over at their own 20-yard line. Run the option, the pitch to Stevens. Uh -uh. And if the quarterback, Loriano doesn't get out any quicker on the option than that, it will never work. No, and uh, I'm not sure Jose Loriano's sold on this option. And, and <laughs> no. he made a statement to us the other day. He says, you know, pros don't look at option quarterbacks. And I, I think what quarterbacks have to understand is when you have the option in your arsenal it's better for you as a quarterback because defenses limit the coverages if you're going to run against the option threat and uh, it only helps as a quarterback to have the option in the other thing you got to remember you're not in the pros yet this no. is college football a long way from it Oriano short set chased out of the pocket again shows some good mobility here throws across his body it was intended for greg addis but well off the mark Coming up on the Coors Light Halftime Report. Chris Fowler will be there. We've all got pen and fever. We'll update you on all the races. Of course, we'll have the Blitz on Thursday night and our hidden video segment. North Carolina State does not have a first down. It's the last six possessions. Loriano steps up, throws, Addis makes the catch, pays for it out at the 33, but there's the first down. Addis is a tough kid with good hands. And that's what you like to see in a receiver. Someone who will catch the ball over the middle in traffic. Greg Addis is going to run in round. Now, again, Jose Loriano makes this play because he gets away from the rush. But look at that catch, knowing he's going to take a hit by Sean Hamill. Hamill came up and really delivered one. 
Stevens back in the ballgame on that tender ankle. That was one of his better runs of the night. He's up to the 39-yard line. Lamont Green made the tackle. To me, Stevens told us uh, yesterday, he said, I like to run the cutback. I like to get the football deep, find the cutback, and break it back. And then Chuck Amato, who's a deep, deep, one of the defensive coaches, said he's good. He says he's got two 100-yard games against us. He said that doesn't happen. Only six for 12. A good cutback runner can have success against a defense like this that pursues so well. This time it's Brown, the fullback, and Brown will cross the 40 to about the 42-yard line. It will leave him a couple of yards short of a first down. This is the difference, I think, in this football team this year. Florida State's always been good. As you said, they won 10 games. Uh, uh, Nine years Nine in a row. Years, but this team is different because they've got a front four that can compare to anybody's in college football. They can control the line of scrimmage with their front four and their quickness on the outside with a pass rush. To beat Florida State, you have to find a way to control their front four. They're outstanding. Third and two. Loriano gives it to Brown, and Brown should have the first down near the 45-yard line. Darrell Bush made the tackle, but not in time for the Seminoles. Quick hitting play to the fullback, Rod Brown, just trying to take advantage of getting helmets on helmets. Let's check in with Chris Fowler right now. Chris? Guys, a very busy Coors Light halftime report. Pennant race highlights the Yankees trying to slam the door on the Orioles. We'll break down the Vols Gators showdown, and the Blitzers will stop by for their halftime thoughts on some of Saturday's other big games as Lee and Kirk join me. Stick around. All right, Chris, thanks very much. The Thursday night magic not working right uh, too well right now here in Raleigh as Florida State is up 24 zip. Loriano again on the option, keeps the ball and eaten alive by Julian Pittman. Here's the other thing about Florida State, that Julian Pittman, number 95, that just made that play, is a junior, and he's the backup to Andre Wadsworth. So again, Chuck Amato and the defensive coaches, Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, getting a lot of players on the field early in the season to build depth. That's what you have to do. Because the injuries will come. Three wide receivers set on second and 11. Clock running, 119 to go in the half. Loriano, play action. Nobody bites. He's got to run for his life again. On the run, throw is complete to the Seminole 41. Grissom with the nice catch, the coverage by Hamlet. But a good throw by Loriano, game 16. I think it's impressive by Jose Loriano because he's running for his life. And when you're able to find Jimmy Grissom down the field and get that completion, that's very impressive. NC State trying to hurry up. Clock turning, closing in on a minute. And now the officials will stop the clock. Timeout, Seminole. And it's a Seminole timeout. 59 seconds to go in the half. Florida State has one timeout left. NC State with a pair. Let's go to Dr. Punch. Jerry? Talking about how Jose Laureano has come on as a quarterback this year. You know, he struggled the first two years here at NC State. Really couldn't find, get his feet on the ground. And basically, he told us when we talked to him a couple days ago, it was simply immaturity. He needed some help. He called home. Who do we all call when we need help? He called mom and said, Mom, hey, I need some help. She left her job in Orlando, told her husband, I'll be back in about six or eight weeks came to Raleigh, moved in with Jose, and basically helped him get his feet on the ground. Jose said, you know, it's great when you have a mother who loves you so much, she'll leave and come up here. He said, that turned my whole year around. In the summer, he stayed here, put on weight, became a leader in the football team, and you see what happens. He's a starter here tonight. Jerry, it's a wonderful story, and you got to take your hat off to his mom to... Uh I mean, mothers are devoted to children. That's the way it works. But sometimes you go that extra step. And he had a brother that played at Florida State. And he yes. got into his ear a little bit, too. And he told him, you got to toughen up. And what he did in the summer was he felt his team didn't have confidence in him. So he ran the summer workouts, the past skeleton. And he took control of that. Because a lot of guys don't want to do that in the summer. But good teams and good quarterbacks will. They'll work on their own. They'll prove their skills. He took over. He was kind of the captain of that. And he he felt he built some confidence in himself with his team. And for the first time in his life, he started watching the film. And he had not done that before. A lot of high school kids don't need to. He had a great comment. He said, you know, I read an article about Peyton Manning and how hard he works. He said, hey, if he can do it as good as he is, I'll do it. Loriano 
battle with time. Throws right through the hands of Holding. was wide open, and he hit him in stride. Here's a big play guy for the NC State offense who had a chance to make a big play and dropped it. You need every break in a ball game when you're out manned, and you can't make those mistakes. You don't think mom's into it? She keeps looking down. I don't know if she has a rosary there or what. Uh, she just uh, keeps looking down. I think she's afraid to look. Second and ten. If you saw this rush, wouldn't you? He'll be looking down again on that one as Laureano's buried at the 43-yard line. Got the low snap and then never had a chance. The third sack by the Seminoles. Bad snap. That started that whole play. And Famous Murphy on the snap. And Renard Wilson hoping he gets a, a piece of that sack. With 23 in his career, only two shy of the school record held by Ron Simmons. And Jose Laureano knows all these players from Florida State. He's yes. hung around there with his brother. Uh, he wanted to go there. So this is a big night for him. Let's go to Jerry Ponch. Talking about Renard Wilson, I mean, this young man is incredible. We talk about the fact he definitely will play on Sunday a year, a couple of years from now. But uh, we talked to him yesterday. He said, you know, what personal goals I have, I'd like to have 100 tackles and 15 sacks. But as a team, we sat down as a defense and said we would like to have six shutouts in 1996. We haven't shut out a team since October of 94. The kid knew the numbers. October of 94 when they shut out Clemson 17 zip. Jerry, it's a little scary when that's your team goal. Six shutouts. You're not talking about wins. And here is Wilson with the 23 sacks. Led the ACC two years ago. Was second to his teammate Bullware last season in sacks. What makes him a very tough pass rusher is he's got an outstanding first step. When you look at him on tape, he's able to make a move and get on that defense or offensive tackle right away and go by him. Just really quick on that first step. Third and 13. Rock Brown is the single setback. Good protection this time for Loriano. Throws short and complete, but Holt way short the of first down. For about 10 yards, it'll be fourth down. It'll be fourth down. Peter Bowyer said the key for me is where the quarterback drops to. And Peter Bowyer is going to get in there and drop Jose Laureano after he throws the football. We ran over Rod Brown, who's 246 pounds as a fullback. As a quarterback, you got to keep thinking, hey, who's supposed to be blocking those guys? They keep getting in my face. Coach, we need to change the blocking schemes a little bit. ABC Sports College Football will kick off Saturday at noon Eastern. You'll see the number nine Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against number six Texas. Then at 3.30, we'll have regional coverage for you. Boston College against number eight Michigan. Georgia Tech against number 11 North Carolina. They look so good against Syracuse. And Arizona and number 24 Washington. Check your local listings for the ABC Sports telecast in your area. Fourth and two for the Wolfpack with 38 seconds to go in the half. They have used their last time out. They will get a temporary stop if they can get the first down and while they move the change. And Stevens is back in, along with King flanking Oriano. Oriano to throw for it. He's got the first down down at the 28-yard line. Seminoles trying not to let the receiver up. Grissett made the catch. Now they'll stop it temporarily to move the uh, move the chains. Mike O'Kane hoping his team could get on the board. And a nice play by Laureano as he just backs off and spikes him into the ground. Stop it with 30 seconds left. Well, Jerry Punch just talked about Bernard Wilson saying they want shutouts. You know that defense is thinking right now. They've got a pressure of Jose Laureano. And as I watch Renard Wilson, he keeps widening his stance a little bit more to try to beat that offensive tackle. He gave up thinking about the run a long while ago. Uh, forget the run for Renard. He's going for the record. They have carried the ball 20 times on the ground, has NC State. They've gained 21 yards. Now the Seminoles used their last timeout. They were really disappointed a couple of weeks ago 
in the opener against Duke. They lost the shutout because of a fumble late in the game on their own seven-yard line. These guys have a lot of pride, and Bush is a big key to it. The middle linebacker who had the knee injury a year ago was never probably better than 80% all season. And when he is healthy, he is a load in the middle. And if you play a 4-3, you have to have a heck of a middle linebacker. You're right, Mike, because the center usually can't block him, but he's the center of everything. He's the leader of the defense. He started every game as a redshirt freshman for Florida State. And in the spring game last year, he knocked out that Busby and Dan Kendra. They had to put Bentley in the quarterback to finish the spring game. But uh, I'm not sure they were real happy with Darryl in that uh, no. thing, but uh, he's a, just a relentless player. No, they did not. As good as Bentley has kicked for them, they did not want him ending up running the offense. 265 yards to 94 for NC State. Florida State came in number one in the nation in total defense. They only allowed 91 yards against Duke. Only 13 rushes. Here's Loriano. Quick set, closing it. Drop. Wide open, Mark Thomas. He was running with it before he caught it. The ball just slightly underthrown, but you have to catch that one. Threw it behind him a little bit. It has to be a catch, oh. He's going to work right down the middle. Mark Thomas, number 24. An odd number for a tight end, but he had that number in high school. He wanted to keep it. Should have had that football. Jose knew he had the completion. Laureano has had two dropped on this drive. Third and ten. Seminole's got a real early start on this one. There's a flag down. That will cost Florida State five yards. Assuming an offensive lineman did not move. And that was Bullwear. Bobby Bowden said, I've never had two bookends like these two players. He said, they're the best we've ever had. Well, Bullwear is quick, but he's not that quick. No. He was trying to get a start on the cages. So now third and five. Spot the ball at the 22 with 23 seconds to go in the half. This will be the 15th play of this drive as the Seminoles have finally seen Florida State put something together on offense. But Loriano running out of downs in time. No timeouts left for the Wolfpack. Oriana to throw. There is the out intended for Grissett. And if that ball's on target, Troy Saunders, it goes 80 yards the other way. Without a doubt. Tom DeBalas, number 63, is going to do a pretty good job on Bernard Wilson here, number 55. Able to get his hands on him and stop him. Then he kind of held him there at the end, grabbed his wrist, but didn't get caught. Fourth down and five. Here comes the blitz. Loriano sacked at the 29-yard line. The fourth sack for the Seminoles as they just fired in there. Greg Spikes, number 90. Vernon Crawford on number 47 on an outside blitz. Peter Bowler in there, number 58. And they turn it over on downs. And that's the pride in that Seminole defense showing there. And now FSU will have the ball with 12 seconds left in the first half and you never really know with Florida State do you 12 seconds to go up 24 nothing most people just kneel down these guys are liable to strike for 70 yards well they got so many weapons it's a chance to get the ball in somebody's hands yeah. and he wouldn't get ordinarily Busby lines them up in the eye draw play to Dunn Warwick Dunn will get 13 yards out of it, which is just about his average per carry, with four seconds to go in the half. On the 43. Because when you do that, Mike, you really, uh, you get good, uh, you got a chance to get something big with a Warwick Dunn or a Cooper. Or... That's going to be the last play. Now they'll restart the clock. The Seminoles will not try to get off another play. Eighty-six yards for Warwick Dunn. 
13 yards receiving, 99 yards in total offense in the first half. And that's it for the first half, 24 nothing, Florida State. Let's check in with Chris Fowler for the Coors Light Halftime Report. Mike, thank you. 67 more yards for the Knowles in the first half than they had all of their game against Duke. We can pro proclaim their offense cured, I think. Oh, yeah. When Lee and Kirk join me on the Coors Light Halftime Report, the pennant race highlights Lee has been craving. We'll talk about the Gators <laughs> and the Vols, our halftime blitz. At the break, Florida State with four sacks, shutting out and foul on the Western New Mexico bench. Adam State moves again. Three personal fouls. Adam State goes from their 35 to the opponent's 15. So the obvious call, Lee, onside kick. But a member of the crowd, and listen carefully over here, he has another coaching suggestion right here. Not the onside kick, but kick a field goal. Kick a field goal! What did I say? What did I say? <laughs> Who says you never listen to fans? They do neither. They kick it off. It's deep, and I don't think it's playable. Why not the onside kick? Oh they just booted over the fence there. That's this week's hidden video.